what is up what is up guys welcome back to the channel as you guys can tell by the title of this video we're gonna go ahead and review my vis racing hood that i have on my 370z which i've honestly had for i would say seven years technically the hood that i have on this car was maybe the second mod that i did to this car and right now you can kind of see the overall condition of it after owning it for about seven years now i will go into more detail what i've done to this hood to keep it looking how it looks right now which is actually pretty clean there's a few spots here and there but for the most part it's a really good looking carbon fiber hood now this video can apply to a lot of people that want to purchase a carbon fiber hood and one that has vents um, i honestly don't think that you should purchase a hood for this car if you just want to get like a simple carbon fiber one it has to have some type of vent or ventilation in it to extract the heat from the engine bay and that's one of the biggest pros when owning an aftermarket hood is the ventilation and it pretty much extracting the heat from the engine bay and that's the main reason why i actually like this hood there's a cop right there let's put the camera down is he turning around now no, we're good so that's the biggest pro to owning an aftermarket hood and i want the car to get warm because once the car gets pretty hot over or at operating temperature and it's hot outside you can actually see the heat from the engine bay escaping those vents right there you'll see little waves of heat coming up and that's an indication that it's working and it's doing its job now there are different types of hoods out there um, of course um, one of them being you know this one right here that I have the VIS racing hood which honestly is one of the better looking hoods in my opinion and there's another one that I like but I'll go ahead and actually talk about that a little bit more once we get out of the car but let me go ahead and drive the car around for a little bit. I actually need to go to the store to pick a few things up. Once I get those things, if it's at operating temperature and I can see the heat extracting, I'll pick it back up and then we'll go to a spot so we can go ahead and talk about the hood and if you guys should purchase it or not. And actually show you around the hood and how it looks if you're interested in getting it. Alright guys, so we're at my spot now. And let's go ahead and jump right into it and talk about my VIS racing hood. And I wanted to go ahead and bring up a con that I know is going to you know bother or affect a lot of you guys that are interested in purchasing a carbon fiber hood or a vis racing hood in general and that is going to be um, the hood yellowing over time and oxidation on the hood so for some manufacturers they do actually add a very good clear coat to their carbon fiber parts which can last a number of years and will not oxidize and, and or yellow so right now if you look at my parts right here you can kind of see that my hood is a little bit more yellow than my vents or my fenders right here the vent the carbon fiber vents that i have from 5.1 motorsports these are the fenders right here and this is from vis racing so in a lot of reviews and things that i have seen online is that vis does not actually add a clear coat on their carbon fiber hood which is bad it's a negative because the parts actually need a very strong uv protectant especially because it's out on the sun a lot because it will begin to yellow which mine did in about two years of owning this hood so you will kind of see a little bit on this side right here specific angles but right about in this area right here you can see that oxidation on the inside and then the hood started to yellow a little bit it looks a whole lot better right now than it would have looked like before because I had it clear coated in about two years of owning this hood. So you can see that it looks actually pretty good now. It's a really good condition. I have actually never buffed out or wet sanded this hood so it still needs that but it honestly came out really good without having to buff it out or sand it down. So right now you can kind of see like a few spots here and there like this right here. This will come off because as soon as I rub it this um, white stuff that it has on here comes off. You can see right there that kind of started coming off already um, but that's one of the biggest downfalls to this hood specifically right here i'm not sure if it'll happen to other hoods as well um you would have to honestly check with the manufacturer to see if they actually add a clear coat on here if they do not add a clear coat you will have to go ahead and do that and depending on the clear coat that you get it may be pretty pricey or it can be pretty cheap you could be looking at about maybe 500 bucks to have your hood uh, re-cleared and making it look a whole lot better so there are different types of clears that are available um, there is going to be like a five-year clear coat 
um, a seven year clear coat, but there's also clear coats that have a UV protectant, which is what you should get for this car if you do plan on re-clearing it. The UV protectant is gonna protect it from the sun, of course, especially living in Arizona. Um, this heat is pretty crazy and it can mess up your parts, you know, pretty fast. So um, that's one thing that I highly recommend that you do for these hoods and it's gonna be a con is it doesn't come with a clear coat and it's just a gel. Um, for those of you that want to know a little bit more about the process when it comes to making these type of parts is they use a type of epoxy um, to go ahead and harden the carbon fiber. So this carbon fiber right here is technically a fabric and a weave that you just place on top of their, um, I guess you can say that their template that they have for their hood. They go ahead and place it on top. They add a, an epoxy clear coat gel that goes ahead and hardens it up and then they keep adding layers and they have like a suction tube if it's done properly they have like a suction um, bag that goes ahead and compresses it to make it extremely you know strong and mold to the area properly and then they keep adding coats of it to make it even stronger now after that process they should or the company or the manufacturer should add some type of clear coat to make it last long and what i think that this manufacturer does is they just make the hood but they don't add a clear coat or if they do they use a very cheap one that doesn't last long at all in my case lasted less you know than two years technically until it started peeling and yellowing so right now it looks good because i had it re-cleared within about you know two years of having it and honestly no issues after that as you can see it looks flawless just have to buff it out sand it and it'll look brand spanking new now that's it when it comes to the actual hood itself when it comes to the way it looks something to be mindful of um but what i was saying about checking with the manufacturer if they actually add a really good clear coat then you shouldn't have to worry about this issue but if they don't then you should go ahead and clear it as soon as you get that hood that way you don't run into any issues and have problems like i do in some areas of my hood now another con uh, about these hoods is you do have to go ahead and ask the type of hood pins to ensure that it's secure and doesn't move a lot as you can see, I added these right here and I had to make holes right there to install the pins. And then I think I added these holes right here at the bottom as well to go ahead and secure this on there. Unless that was already there, I honestly cannot remember, but I went ahead and put these pins on there. It came with my kit for the hood pins, installed it, and it has helped out reducing the amount of movement that this hood has. So at higher speeds, I will notice that my hood would move quite a bit, especially like when I was sitting in the driver's seat, I would see like this section right here would move a lot and so would the bottom. Um, as soon as I install these hood pins, I don't have that issue anymore. And from my understanding, a lot of manufacturers suggest or highly recommend that you actually add some type of hood pin. Um, if you don't add hood pins and for some reason it opens up and it hits your windshield and it breaks it and it cracks your hood as well, I don't think they cover it if you don't have hood pins. So that's one thing to... Uh, make sure you guys look into it as well um, especially if you buy your hood from a different type of company but for what i remember that's the information that i saw when it comes to warranting your hood if something does happen to it so yeah that's another con that you guys may have that you will have to add some type of pin so another con but it's also like a positive thing about this hood is it has these covers right here but they constantly get loose over time and um, the only way that i can think about fixing this getting loose is adding new bolts in there and then adding some type of thread locker so it doesn't get loose anymore that's one thing i can think of to help keep them in place but these do help out a lot because it makes sure that no water gets inside of your engine bay area so it does protect it a lot as you can see this one is like covered right there it's right in this area and then the ventilation has like this lip right here so no water gets in that area so that's pretty cool that's a plus and a con con that it gets loose but pro that it helps with water and not getting inside the engine bay now if that cover wasn't there if you could imagine one you would be able to see in your engine bay but water would get in there and then it would get into your intake filter if you had it exposed in my case mine's not exposed it has that cover on there to keep heat away from it if you have the still engine two intakes which are the longer ones and or just you know intakes that are longer in general i know there's a few companies that make them like z1 admin you, they'll go ahead and extend all the way to the front right there and you don't have to worry about that but there's a possibility it could get in this area right here on your map um, airflow sensor which you also wouldn't want so um, that's one thing that you got to be mindful of because some hoods do not have 
this type of um, cover on it to protect it from water. For example, uh, one of my favorite hoods for this car is going to be this one right here. But there's also the Terminator hood from uh, Fly One Motorsports. Now that hood right there, I know for a fact it does not have covers for the inside where the vents are at. So if you guys are familiar with that hood, the vents are like in the middle and it has this big hole exposed with a bulge, which looks really sick and aggressive, but it's completely exposed. It has like no mesh, no nothing in there and it has no protectant. So it honestly has this whole area open right here to allow water to get in there. So that can be, you know, a con um, is having water go in that area, but it's not too much of a big deal because there's nothing really in there that it can damage. If you have everything covered up right here, like it does um, with this um, cover, then you shouldn't have any issues with it getting into any of the components, but it might touch those components right there. So just something to keep in mind. Um, it's the type of hood that you get. Not all of them have, you know, good covers that are gonna protect it from water, but you know, it is a great hood and it's gonna extract the heat from your engine. Um, when it comes to buying a hood, in my honest opinion, this hood specifically, I'm not sure about the other hoods, does not weigh any much less than the stock hood. If anything, I think the original hood that came on this car um, was lighter. Not by a lot, but it was a little bit lighter. So that can be a negative if you're looking to, you know, have weight reduction on your car. Um, I don't think that this saves too much weight. I think the stock hood is already pretty light. So what you could even do is you could actually buy some hood vents, um, you know, just the hood vents, just like I did with my M45. Um, cut into your original hood and add a vents there and I think that would do the exact same thing that this one would do here and not be heavy at all either so that's an alternative that you guys could do like if you don't want to spend the money for a carbon fiber hood because these things can get pretty expensive luckily for me I got mine for like $700 but I think these things go for like a thousand right now so um, they are up there in price but they do look extremely good um, on your car when you install them it was like one of the first things I had to do to this car and I honestly don't regret it. It looks really sick Another con that I forgot to mention is actually gonna be the fitment on the hood So I'm not sure if you guys yeah, you, you can see it. So like right here on this side right here It's a lot closer to the headlight along with the fender Now right here on this side. There's a larger gap Now I will say and I will be completely honest. This is partially my fault and the reason I say that is because when I added my hood pins um, it actually shifted the hood a little bit to the right side, but as you can see, there's still going to be a slight gap from the original one, so it's not going to be perfect either way. So when it comes to aftermarket hoods, they're not always going to be perfect. You're always going to have a slight gap from the original hood to an aftermarket carbon fiber one. So that's one con that you guys may get out of this right here. So right here, there's a space, and I could easily fix that and make it look a little bit better just by shifting the hood a little bit more to the left side, which I could do by moving the brackets a little bit, but I just haven't got around to doing that. So it's just something that you gotta play with. And it's always like that anyways with aftermarket parts. They don't always fit perfect. You always gotta do some type of modification to make it fit perfect. And I think this is what I ran into in this you know, car right here, or this hood is the fitment. And it's partially my doing, just fixing it a little bit more. Now, another thing that I forgot to mention as well, so when you buy aftermarket hoods, they don't always close like the original one did, right? So usually with the original one, um, once you latch it, push down, it'll close, right? Not for this one. As you can see, it doesn't close, right? So you see right there, see it's not going to close. Right now it latched to the pins, that's why it's closing. But if it didn't have these pins right here, this thing would not latch just like that. So guess what I gotta do? I honestly gotta slam this thing a little bit to make it close. Luckily for me, I got used to it and I know how to close it without having to slam it too hard and cracking the hood. But I honestly just gotta lift it a little bit, like right about here. And then I just gotta like shut it like that. See, now it closed. Now it's not moving at all. I just gotta push this one to latch onto the pin. And there you go, now it latched. So that's another thing that you guys will have to, you know, consider when you're buying an aftermarket hood is, one, the latch may not always latch properly and it'll leave it loose. And then when you're driving, 
it'll lift up. That's why sometimes you'll see in these videos or these guys that are driving these cars and their hoods just open is one because they forget to close the hood properly and or it doesn't latch properly and then it just opens up when you're driving. So be careful with that. I know for some friends that I've had, they actually had to kind of move the latch a little bit itself because the little mechanism that's in there that latches into wasn't sitting properly. I believe for the 350Z, the actual latch itself, you know how you have two on the Z? For the 350Z, it's right in the middle. And when you latch it down, it doesn't clamp on properly. And you got to actually relocate or move it a little bit forward and back on the latch portion in order for it to actually secure on there and grab it. So that's pretty much it when it comes to the hood, uh, what I think about it. Um, usually when I review my parts, I'm honestly very blunt. I'm not going to lie to you guys and say, yeah, it's amazing. It's always been perfect. Um, there's always, you know, going to be a negative effect to a part that you install on your car, whether it's going to be cosmetic or functionality. Um, when it comes to the functionality, I did have to do a few things to make it work perfect. Like I mentioned, it would move a lot. I think those hood pins remove the vibration from the hood. And then the oxidation and the yellowing had to go ahead and get it re-cleared and then haven't had any issues since I did the re-clear. Of course, I purchased a more expensive clear um, that was going to last a long time. I did like a seven year UV protectant, which is an expensive clear. Do it right the first time. You won't ever have to do it again. So that was the main reason I did that. I went with the expensive one so I don't have to re-clear it in the future, which is, as you guys can see, it looks good still. Just got to buff it out and wet sand it to make it look perfect. But yeah, um, that's pretty much it, guys. Um, if you guys want me to review anything on my car that you guys are interested in, let me know. Uh, the reason I wanted to go ahead and do these videos right now is because I did post up this car for sale if anybody is interested in purchasing it. So I wanted to go ahead and take the time to actually review a few parts on this 370Z in case you guys are interested in purchasing anything and um, give you guys a little bit of feedback on what I think. As you guys can see, I'm very blunt about my parts and what I purchase. I'm not sponsored by anybody, so I don't care. Like, I'm going to give you my honest review on these parts, whether I think they're worth it or not. If you guys have any questions, leave it down in the comments below. Very beautiful car. Love this thing. But, yeah, that is pretty much it, guys. Dang, the freaking sun's in my face. <laughs> but, yeah, that is pretty much it, guys. Hopefully, you guys like this video. It gives you some feedback on this hood, whether you should purchase it or not. Honestly, it is a beautiful hood. I love how it looks. It gives it an aggressive look. But there's a few things that you got to do to make sure it stays nice and looks good for a long, long time. So re-clear it if you get it um, and then go ahead and just maintain it. You'll be fine. Add those hood pins. Doesn't have to be the specific one, but just some hood pins that will, you know, stay put. Won't let the um, hood move too much. You'll be good. But other than that, it's an amazing hood. I love it. No regrets purchasing it. Uh, thank you guys so much for watching. Make sure to like, subscribe, hit that bell notification, and I'll catch you guys in the next one. Peace.